Greetings. It's July 19th. It's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning and we're just going to take a look at some of the modus terra that popped up at 12.30 a.m. This gives us an indication of where fires may be uh, expanding and where, what direction they may be moving into. We'll run through this really quickly because we'll need confirmation from the VWIRS systems when they come in and they can confirm some of the motion that we're seeing. First off, we're at the White Rock Lake Fire. This is east of Merritt. It is southwest of Westwold and Falkland. This is yesterday's infrared notice. It's approaching that infrastructure line, the diagonal that's running through the center of the screen. And then in today's update, it crosses that. It appears to be heading in a northwestern direction. These modus indications can be off as much as a kilometer. Each of those squares is about 750 meters. So uh, it is showing that it has movement over that apparent right of way. Not seeing a lot of random uh, indications, but I am seeing these diagonal, what appear to be controlled signatures. So there may be uh, some activity going on there from wildfire crews in order to stem the amount of fuel that's uh, being consumed. Next, we're jumping westward. This is to the Tremont Creek Fire that's east of Ashcross, south of Highway 1 at Wallachine and Juniper Beach. Uh, we're looking at yesterday's infrared and then today's come in. Uh, a lot of this infrared is in the same forested blocks, but I am seeing further movement to the northwest and to the east. Now, these modus indications could be off slightly, so we'll need ground confirmation. Check out with BC Wildfire in the links below for this fire. Now we've moved north to, to the Sparks Lake Fire. Uh, we're looking at infrared that accumulated yesterday, and it's going to roll in today. And if you notice on the lower left-hand portion of the screen, those diagonal modus blocks, they've actually moved from the south of Chartrand Lake and are displaying that they may have moved north of the lake. As well, there was northern movement on the fire southeast of Young Lake. That's at the top portion of the screen and generally all these fire pockets have shown northern movement. We're moving northwest now to the Flat Lake Fire. Looking at the infrared from yesterday, there was a big expansion on the eastern flank and in the north. Today, we are seeing some expansion eastward. It appears to have crossed that infrastructure right of way, that line that we were using as a landmark. So we'll zoom in. We're looking at the eastern flank. This is west of Highway 97. Note that diagonal infrastructure right-of-way uh, coming down the screen and now rolling into today's infrared we're seeing heat detections that have moved eastward across that line. Next we'll take a look at the southern southeastern flank. Uh, yesterday's infrared was showing about two kilometers from the north shore of Cunningham Lake. Today we have an encroachment coming in from the modus infrared uh, showing about a kilometer to 750 meters north of Cunningham Lake. These squares do not mean that there is fire everywhere within a square. It just means that somewhere within that square heat was detected. We've moved to the northern and western flanks of the Flat Lake Fire. We're looking at yesterday's infrared. Now we're rolling into today's modus indications. Not a lot on the northwestern flank. We are seeing some new infrared on the southern flank and the western side. We're moving northeast now to Canham Lake. We're at the southeast end of Canham Lake looking at infrared from yesterday. Uh, it's going to roll into today. Now we see three modus indications in roughly the same position as those earlier, but they did move around a bit. So a ground report for the area is going to be vital. 
We'll take a look north of Canham Lake. This is north of the Eagle Creek area uh, and around Lang Lake. That's over on the left hand side of the screen. Rolling into today's. No fire indications around Lang Lake. However, we are still seeing three north of Eagle Creek. And we'll need to see when the VIIRS uh, infrared information comes in so that we have confirmation of where fire could be. Some may be obscured by smoke and cloud. We're looking at the area east of Lytton now. Very rugged country. This is along the Thompson River and Highway 1 heading to the bend in the river that turns and goes up to Spence's Bridge. Looking at yesterday's infrared and then rolling into today's. Seeing very slight expansion eastward. Most of it is within the existing perimeter. However, that northeastern flank appears to have pushed further north by as much as perhaps 750 meters if we use those squares as a gauge. Next, we're jumping to the North Okanagan. This is east of Vernon. We're looking at Maple Lake and Sugar Lake. Uh, there was some growth yesterday. Let's just see how far this has progressed towards the Monashies and not seeing much change. Most of those new infrared are within the existing perimeter, so hopefully that's a positive sign. We've gone south to Okanagan Falls now. This is east of Skaha Lake, looking at expansion eastward and to the northeast from yesterday, rolling into today, and yes, it does look like some more expansion eastward along the Allendale Lake Road. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's moved northeastward. This is another situation where it's going to need a ground report because it's just a little too close to call. Those MODIS uh, heat detections could be off uh, 750 meters or a kilometer. We've now moved to the Lower Arrow Lake and uh, we're also looking at the cluster of infrared north of Christina Lake. Uh, Christina Lake's just below the scale at the bottom of the screen. Here's the new heat detections. The Michaud fire to the west of Arrow Lake appears to have moved in a northwestern direction and likewise with the Octopus Creek fire on the other side of the lake. Also northwest of Granby Provincial Park there's a cluster of infrared that wasn't on yesterday's that's popped up on today's scan so we'll have to watch when the VIIRS comes in whether or not uh, there's additional activity going on in that region. We're looking at the interior of southern BC, the array of uh, infrared and all the different fires and fire flanks that have to be dealt with with these ever-changing wind conditions. Uh, looking for a trend of southwest winds and southern winds coming in and pushing and in the central portion of the province and looking to the far north not seeing any infrared really now that may be obscured by cloud cover so if you're along highway 16 where there have been some uh, fairly significant fires you want to check with bc wildfire and find out what their recommendations are they'll have links to the different districts right from the situation page for the fire that you're interested in we're looking at a screen from windy and there's a flag marker there it's right around cunningham lake in the flat lake fire area uh, if you want more data there's a arrow on the flag just click anywhere on the screen and one of these flags will pop up uh, click on the arrow and that will call up the forecast looking uh, in advance and at the bottom of the screen where it shows you the different weather models to select there's another option compare if you click on that you'll see four or five different weather models all stacked up together so that you can quickly see what the trend is between all the different weather models and for this area around Flat Lake Fire uh, there looks to be gusts coming from the south in the midday increasing from the west. This is imagery from the satellite uh, photo of the Flat Lake area and we can see that calm in the center of the screen but on either side to the southeast at the lower right hand corner of the screen winds are coming from the southwest and on the upper left hand portion of the screen winds are coming from the northwest and they're kind of meeting in the middle. 
The weather forecasts are suggesting that southern winds in the daytime will be predominant. Uh, there could be gusts. There may be variation depending on which side of a valley you're on and what the terrain's like. Check with BC Wildfire, check with your district, find out what the evacuation alerts and notices are, and above all, be safe. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your nose to the breeze.